Hello everyone, I hope you all are having a great evening so far. Today we'll be looking at the severe weather threat for today, uh, Wednesday the 24th, and we'll also be looking at uh, tomorrow, Thursday the 25th uh, threat, and we'll also kind of look at Saturday's threat a little bit as well, but we won't be taking as, a, um, as much of a deep dive as we will today with today's threat and tomorrow's threat. So currently, as of the latest 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there is a marginal risk in Texas and Louisiana and Mississippi into Alabama and uh, just barely into Florida a little bit there. But with this is a 2% tornado threat right here in Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama. There's also a 5% wind risk with this from Texas all the way to Alabama again with uh the other th the threat going into louisiana and um mississippi there's also a five percent hell risk with this just uh isolated in texas with this as well for tomorrow january the 25th threat there is a marginal risk currently up for louisiana mississippi alabama and Georgia, uh, excuse me georgia and florida and as well as a little bit into Tennessee. Uh, with this, there's also a 2% tornado risk with this from Louisiana into Mississippi, Alabama, a little bit into Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida. There isn't really a hell risk with this. For Friday the 26th, there is currently a general thunderstorm risk, and I do expect maybe to be a marginal risk issued somewhere in here. For Saturday the 27th, there is currently a 15% risk up here for Alabama and Georgia. So with this 15% risk here, this automatically means there is a slight risk issued. So as soon as the uh, day three outlook comes out, which will be tomorrow, this will automatically be at least a slight risk or higher depending on if they upgrade it or not. So if we look at today's flood threat, there is a moderate risk still up for today. And this is at least a 40% chance of uh, risk of rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance within 25 miles of any given point in right here. Uh, there's a slight risk around that with a marginal risk, risk as well, extending from Texas to Ohio. For tomorrow, Thursday the 25th, still a slight risk up for these areas right here and a uh, marginal risk that extends from Pennsylvania all the way to Texas. For Friday the 26th, there is a marginal risk for Kansas and Oklahoma, and there is a marginal and slight risk up for the Mid-South and Southeast. For Saturday the 27th, there is currently a marginal risk up for Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama, and to Tennessee as well. Forgot to mention this earlier, but for Friday the 26th, there's also a marginal risk up for Oregon and Northern California with a, another risk on Saturday the 27th for a little bit of Oregon into Northern California again. And on day five, the uh, 28th, Sunday the 28th, there's a marginal risk up for parts of Oregon. So as of 5.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there are currently seven total flash flood warnings in effect, and some are in Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas. So taking a look at the 21ZHRRR, as you can see, all these storms down here throughout the uh, south will continue to move northward uh, into the evening and the night. Any of these storms in the uh, Louisiana, Mississippi uh, area can and do have the chance to produce a quick little tornado and with the uh, little bit of a wind threat there too. Um, there is a low end hail threat into Texas and that will exist with some of these storms you'll see late tonight. The flooding risk will continue throughout the night into tomorrow with these storms. As you can see here, very heavy precipitation showing up late tonight in Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and uh, Georgia, and that will continue into tomorrow. The 18Z three kilometer now pretty much says the same thing 
with just scattered convection and lingering convection over uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Louisiana, still with that flood threat persisting with all these storms. Uh, if there is more breaks in this precipitation, the flooding threat will definitely decrease a little bit. But if this precipitation, you know, keeps lingering over these areas, we'll definitely have a uh, isolated flood threat with that too. As the evening goes on, there won't be a lot of cape. Uh, this is showing up on the 21ZH R. So throughout the night, these storms will kind of lose their strength. Now looking at the 18ZH R for uh, Thursday, tomorrow, the 25th, um, that tornado threat will exist with any of these storms here that can get isolated and will have enough have enough low level winds to really create a quick tornado and these will all have a uh, wind a little bit of a wind threat with them too as this other line kind of moves through uh, mississippi and alabama into tennessee and then georgia and north carolina tomorrow uh, as well as south carolina with that wind threat there too so looking at the 18z gfs there isn't a um a very strong low level jet with this a 850 millibars but it ranges from the mid 30s to just about 40 knots over the areas that'll see the instability tomorrow so going back to the uh, 18z h triple r if we look at surface based cape you have that cape that builds into the early afternoon hours into the um you know a thousand to fifteen hundred joules per kilogram of surface base cape here this could definitely be a problem if there's a, a sufficient low level jet with this that will definitely help these storms kind of keep going and have that chance to drop a quick tornado throughout the day looking at the temperatures for tomorrow the temperatures will stay into the you know the mid 60s overnight tonight into tomorrow morning and then as the sun starts to come up they'll rise into the upper 60s and into the 70s and these mid uh, 70 temperatures will definitely be a contributing factor to these storms being able to get stronger throughout the day looking at the ace triple r with the dew points for tomorrow these dew points will be pretty similar to the temperatures and will be into the mid 60s in the early morning hours tomorrow and these will be able to i know it's kind of hard to see but these will kind of spike into the upper 60s to lower 70 range tomorrow which is plenty of um, moisture for these storms to get stronger if we take a look at saturday severe weather threat on the 18z gfs this there's definitely a a more of a potent low level jet with this with it reaching uh, just about 50 knots or over 50 knots in Alabama uh, Saturday just before lunchtime. And this will kind of increase a little bit and strengthen over Alabama and Georgia and into a little bit of Tennessee here. And then towards the evening again, it'll strengthen. And then we have a 50 millibar wind speeds in the mid 50s here. And this continues into Georgia with it remaining around in the mid 50s and into South Carolina as well. And this will overspread into the South Carolina, North Carolina area on late Saturday night into Sunday morning. So that's really going to be it for tonight's update. I know it was pretty jumbled up, but uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is focus on any severe winter weather the day of and then the next day instead of focusing on you know weather three or four days out because it's it's a lot harder if you're looking at it that way and you know you can't really provide as much accurate information if you're looking at weather three to four days out and with the if i'm looking at the day of or the day after or the next day i mean uh, I can get into more of a deep dive instead of having to worry about still doing uh, day like day three or day four's severe winter weather threat. So 
Uh, that's something I'll definitely try to improve on, and I'm gonna try to get more uh, in depth in like the radar if I'm showing the NAM or the HRRR or any other model, because I feel like I'm not as in depth as I would like to be. But like I said, it's it's a learning experience. But I really appreciate y'all watching, and I hope all of y'all have a great rest of y'all's evening.